Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3C of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 80 and the question is number 3. It reads, a particle is fired with initial speed u from the foot of an inclined plane which makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. If the particle's line of projection makes an angle of 75 with the horizontal, find the range and the maximum perpendicular height above the plane in terms of u and g. So the first thing I'm going to do is sketch the motion itself. So we draw our y-axis and we draw our x-axis which make our x, y or Cartesian plane. The next thing we do is we draw our incline. You know the incline is at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal like so. And we say the best way to do these questions is to make a new axis called the x prime y prime axis or x prime y prime plane excuse me. So you call the incline itself x prime and draw a perpendicular anywhere and call that y prime. So all we've done is rotated the xy plane here anti-clockwise by 30 degrees. The next thing we need to do is draw in the initial velocity vector u. And u is equal to the following. Now before I do that I'm going to define unit vectors like so. I'm going to leave these parallel to the x prime y prime plane. So this is j hat this is i hat. So u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat. In order to resolve the vector u, we need to find the two vectors which, when added together, create the vector u. They must be parallel to the u, uh, excuse me, to the x prime and y prime axes. So this is parallel to the x prime. This is parallel to the y prime. So this is u sub y. I'm just going to get rid of this now for a moment. This is u sub x. All right. We're going to call this angle here. Uh, now, just just talk about the angle. Initially, we had, we'll say that that is the that's the plane at 30 degrees, and we know that that's the initial velocity vector. We're told that the, between the velocity vector and the horizontal here in blue is 75 degrees. Therefore, this angle here is equal to 40 degrees or equal to 45 degrees. So this angle here is 45 degrees. Alright, so now we need to resolve the velocity vector itself. So we'll use Sakatoa as normal and this becomes u times the cosine of 45 i hat and this is u times the sine of 45 j. Therefore, if we just draw up our u vast as normal, so we have x axis the y-axis, just give me a moment there please, actually fight their primes. So we know of course that the initial velocity vector in the x direction, x prime direction is u cos 45. Now the cos of 45 is 1 over root 2, so it's actually u over root 2. Just to show you that, cos of 45 is equal to root two, over two, root 2 over 2 which is equal to 1 over root 2. The sine is, is, is also equal to that. So this is also equal to u over root 2. Like so. The next thing we need to do is the most difficult part is to resolve the gravity vector itself. So just let me now set this up again. We know this angle here is equal to 30 degrees. So the gravity vector acts in the negative y direction, like so. So in order to resolve this vector in the x prime, y prime direction, we need to start by, by drawing a line parallel to the y prime. And when we can, draw a line parallel to the x prime. So this vector here is u or g, we'll say it's g sub y. This vector here is g sub x. So we need to resolve this. And we were told in the past that if you have two angles which cross each other perpendicularly, then the angles are equal. So this is also equal to 30 degrees, because if you extend g sub y, it, it bisects the angle 30 degrees at a right angle. So g sub x becomes g times the sine of 30, because it's opposite the angle of 30. And this here is g times the cosine of 30. Now if you look on the, ang or the directions on both of those vectors, they're both going in the opposite direction to the positive x prime and positive y prime directions. So they must be decelerations, which means that when we put in the number for g, we should get a negative number. 
And we always say that G is equal to minus 9.8. So when I plug that in here, that's a negative number. And so is this, which means we're okay. So let's just note this down here. We have A is equal to G times cosine of 30 in the J hat direction and G times the sine of 30 in the I hat direction. So first of all, we'll find out what the sine of 30 is. It's equal to half. So in actual fact, this becomes G over 2. And the cosine of 30 is equal to root 3 over 2. So this becomes g root 3 over 2. The next thing I'm asked to do is find the maximum range. And you should remember that the maximum range corresponds to the time at which the height is above ground is equal to 0. So when s sub y is equal to 0. So s sub y is equal to ut plus a half a t squared. So it's equal to ut over 2, or ut over root 2, plus half g root 3 over 2 t squared. And we're saying that's equal to 0. So what we get here is that if we take out t, we'll get u over root 2 plus g root 3 over 4 t is equal to 0. And when two things multiply together and equal 0, then one of them must be equal to 0 itself. So this t is equal to 0. And also 4 u over root 6 times g is equal to t. Alright, 4u over root 6 times g is equal to t. And is there a negative? Yes, there's a negative sign there as well. Alright, and that's correct. So I'm just going to note this at the very bottom here. You don't need to do this yourself. 4u for root 6. That g, have I put that g in the wrong place? No, that g should be... Half a t squared. Yeah, that, that's correct. Alright, so now what we need to do is plug that value for time into s sub x, the range, to find the actual distance covered. So s sub x also equals ut plus half a t squared. And we're just going to find out what that is now. So it's ut over root 2 plus g over 4 t squared. So we'll say the following. We'll say u over root 2 times t, which was minus 4u over root 6 times g, plus g over 4. Now, g over 4 would be minus 4.9 over 2 times t squared. And we know that t is equal to minus 4u over root 6 times g squared like that. Alright? So let's that's that becomes minus four u squared over root twelve g and this becomes plus and we're gonna get two times four point nine would become nine point eight one again u squared over root six g so that becomes sorry six I think here now it becomes 6 times g squared. Alright, now 9.81 is also equal to g, so what I can do is I can cancel this with this here, and what we're left with is that we have minus 4 u squared of root 12 g plus u squared over, uh, we'll say this is 6 is root 36 g. Alright? So let's just uh, let's see what the answer to that is. If we take out u squared, what we get is we get 1 over root 36 minus 4 over root 12 all times 1 over g. So let's plug this into our calculator. 1 divided by root 36, which is 6 plus, or minus, excuse me, 4 divided by root 12. I did something wrong there. 
gives me an answer of minus 0.98, so it's essentially minus 1. Divide that by 9.81, and we get equals minus 0 0.1 times u squared. Like so. So that is the maximum distance travelled. Alright, so I'm just going to check that here now. Uh, I'm just going to actually have to go to the back of the book because my notes here don't actually have the answer. So we're on 3C question 3. And this, uh, the answer I'm given in the back of the book is as follows. We're given 2u squared. I can't see that. We're given 2u squared times root 3 minus 1 over 3g. So the thing I need to do here of course is work out do I have the same answer. So just bear with me a moment now. So we have root 3 minus 1 divided by 3 divided by 9.81 multiplied by 2 and that's 0 0.049 which is equivalent to 0 0.01. And what do we have? 0 0.01. So that is correct. All right. So we're doing well so far. The next part of the question is to find the maximum perpendicular height above the ground in terms of u and g. In actual fact, you should have read the very end of the question because it asked for everything you left in terms of u and g. So what I'm going to do is go back up here to our u vast. Now I've rubbed out one or two small pieces, so let's just fix up those again. So this is s, and that's my Viro stopped working. S and we have T. So this is UT, so that's UT over root 2 plus G root 3 over 4 T squared. So the maximum height above the plane. So the maximum height above the plane is donated by the fact, or is defined, excuse me, by the fact that the velocity above the ground, V sub y, is equal to 0. And V sub y is equal to U plus AT. So it's U over root 2 plus g root 3 times t over 2. So we need to set that equal to 0. So we have u over root 2 plus g root 3 over 2 equal to 0. Therefore t is equal to minus 2u over root 2 times g times root 3. So the root 2 cancels here to go root 2. So what we get is minus the square root of 2 over the square root of 3 times 1 over g times u. Alright, I'm just going to make a note of this down here. So it's minus u root 2 over root 3g. So we know that at that time the particle has come to rest and it, it, it is at its maximum height above the ground. So we need to plug this into s sub y, which is the actual height of above the ground. So we get u over root 2 times what we found out for t, which was minus u root 2 over root 3g plus g over 4 times root 3 times t squared, which is u squared times 2 over 3 times g squared. All right. So next we need to start cancelling things. So we can cancel this g with this g squared. We can cancel this 2 with this 2 here. We can cancel this root 3 with this and we get root 3. Uh, we can cancel this root 2 here. And we get minus u squared over root 3 times g. Alright. Plus u squared over 2 root 3 times g. So let's check this now. Maximum height grant. Okay, so let's just check this in the back of the book. So question 3 of 3c. We should get 3u squared over 6g.
excuse me, it should be root 3. So what we need to do is test to see if the two of these are the same. So I'm just going to rub out these things that we don't need anymore. They're just going to confuse the issue. Alright. So let's just play around with this again here. So if you pull out u squared, we're going to get 1 over 2. And actually pull out or u squared over g. So 1 over 2 root 3 minus 1 over root 3. Alright, so just put this in the calculator again. 1 divided by 2 root 3. Oh, excuse me. Minus 1 divided by root 3. Three. That gives me minus root 3 over 6. So we get minus u squared over g times root 3 over 6, which is exactly what we we're supposed to have gotten over there. So that was reasonably straightforward. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.